Okay, out of land, it's going down. Nav bridge. Bridge, this is Nav. Yeah, we're going back into, into GP now. Good up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi. I believe we still have some. There, much better. Okay, sorry about that. Good morning again. My mic was a bit far from my mouth. Good morning, everybody. How, how's everyone doing on this fine Monday morning. Wonderful. Every day's every day's a dream. Every day's a dream. I feel like your mic is a bit far from your mouth too, though. No. <laughs> Better. Check check. There we go. Awesome. So up five zero meters. You guys ready for control? In bucket. Ready. You guys got it. We're going on comms. This is Dive Hotel. One nine two zero UTC eighteen twenty two no eighteen twenty three oh five mark Does anyone know what depth we're going to right now? 2100. I do. 2130. 2130. Thank you, guys. Ryan was quicker on the draw. <laughs> <laughs> and the name of this seamount is, drum roll please, Mercury Seamount. Mercury Seamount. I'm just guessing, so... Thank you. 2130 meters is the very bottom of the seamount. 
How about the top? I'm seeing on this paper that the top of our plateau is uh, 1,426 meters. That's the plan. I think I read like four kilometers lateral distance. I don't know if you're putting that in there. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so down to put that distance in there. Where, where, where do I find that? <laughs> oh. Transiting 2.4 kilometers. Is that correct? 4.2. 4.2. Thank you. We haven't done just the descent in a while. No. Yeah. I was just wondering, I don't know if it's good for the camera to look right at it. But no, not particularly. No. But that's kind of, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> just so the folks at home can see what we're talking about. <laughs> there you go. Ground fault just got a uh, worse stand. That is a nice laser shot. Interesting view. Yeah. We're going to go down and Oh, yeah, you can move it around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to see where it hits? Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, that don't do. <laughs> UV. Hmm. I tried to read the math on that one day and my head exploded. Very serious math going on. Roger that. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Aloha kakahiaka. Morning, Dwight. Good morning. Happy Patriots Day. Good morning. For those of you familiar with the Massachusetts holiday and the running of the Boston Marathon, uh, which just got completed. Nice. Cool. Well, not completed. The winners are already in. <laughs> Someone completed it. <laughs> the slow passed. people are still running. Yeah. There's definitely some people still running it. Or walking. Yeah. Or is walking not an option? Dan, when we get to 2.30, would you be ready for a ship move back to waypoint one? Right. Any speed limits? Okay. Got it. No. <coughs> it's 
swing around and do weird stuff. Bridge, this is Nev. We're Please coming up proceed to the nasty back to waypoint in one. The So I can give uh, the kind of overall update if I that's uh, appropriate right now. The, uh, yeah. We did a bunch of mapping overnight. Anything for you. <laughs> around uh, Solid AC mount where we dove the other day, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roger. we worked our way a little farther south, about uh, oh, 50 miles or so, 40 miles south. Uh, and we are on the southern flank of Mercury Seamount. And the vehicles just went in the water a short time ago, and we're descending down to a depth of 2,130 meters. So that'll take uh, two hours or so, probably. I don't see the estimated time to bottom, but H21. And we'll start the dive on this uh, ridge feature that is on the southern flank of the seamount and uh, rises up from a very deep depth up to the summit of the seamount. And we'll be uh, traversing a, a good portion of that, about four kilometers, 4.2 kilometers. And uh, we expect the dive to take about 24 hours. So it'll be similar to previous dives where we're exploring for um, uh, looking at the biological diversity and um, benthic ecology of the seamount flank here at these uh, uh, water depths that were chosen to really reveal the the, um, <coughs> the sort of best looking biology for the dive we think and um, also picking up rocks for studying the uh, geological evolution of the seamount and the origin of the seamount and uh, looking at um, collecting also ferromanganese crusts which will be uh, studied for their microbes and their sort of concentration and uh, characterization and yeah, I think I said it should be about a 24 hour dive. So looking forward to kicking it off on our watch. Thank you. <laughs> what are we looking at? Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Happy birthday Dan. Dan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, is it Dan's birthday today? It didn't. It wasn't on the whiteboard. Well, you don't have a cake later today. Without <laughs> ice cream, sadly. No ice cream. Oh man. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I can't believe you caught that. I was going to uh, suggest that we run the arms. <laughs> Just to make sure that he definitely <laughs> saw it. First 300 meters. Discerning Dan. <laughs> Saw we had some colored cup corals on our stateroom door. I was pretty excited about that. You have cup, co cup corals on your stateroom door? Yeah, there's a birthday sign for Dan and some cup corals and other things. You're Dan's roommate? Cool. Is that true? Yeah. Just trying to update our um, our status on our website. Vehicles are descending. Uh, 
This dive will Okay. This dive will be 24 hours long, yeah? Yes, I'm getting a head nod. That's the plan, man. All right. <laughs> Lots of viewers wishing you a happy birthday, Delta Dan. Delta Dan. <laughs> Have we had anything land on the boat since the red footed boobies? We've had uh, all the kinds of boobies land on board this this cruise, and then we've had some kaupu and moli that just hang out in the water very close to the vessel as we are getting our DP ready, as we're getting our vessel, um, the vehicles into the water also. <coughs> But we haven't had as much birds as the last cruise's visit. And we won't, I hope. Good evening, Norway. Let's see, who else can I call out on right now? The USA, United Kingdom. Hello, Canada, Germany, Finland, Norway, Portugal, Italy, France, Brazil, Australia, Hawaii. Quite a few viewers. Um, this is just what people, I only see the feed that watches from the website. And then every now and then there will be a little update in the comment section saying that there's this many people watching on YouTube. Um, the target depth for today, well, we are right now we are uh, descending to 2,130 um, meters. Um, and then we'll be moving, uh, transiting 4.2 kilometers. And that depth that we are going to once we reach our final waypoint will be 1500 meters i am i i read here on the paper <clears throat> florida hi how do crew members aboard the nautilus celebrate their birthdays with cake but no ice cream this, this trip. Usually the uh, the crew cook a big cake for anyone's birthday, which is pretty awesome. Is this the 6K bubble? Only two something, so we're good. But uh, this might just be from washing. Mmm, that's fun.
That's almost better. I thought the 6K had sprung another leak or you hadn't gotten it the first time, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Here's a question. Why do we call the control room the van? We call it control van, yeah? Yeah, it's sort of a historical term. Uh, these originally were shipping containers. Well, they still are shipping containers, really. So calling shipping containers vans is pretty common practice because uh, mm. um, you can ship them anywhere in the world and put them on trucks and uh, put them on ships and fly them away sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. So historically, we had called the control van the control van because we would install it on different ships and it would always be the same, didn't matter what ship we're on. Mm. These are, are uh, these have never seen cargo. They were custom built from the ground up. But they're, they're dimensionally the same and structurally the same and they actually, you have to meet certain requirements and specifications to be able to ship cargo vans on ships mm. and these meet all of those specifications so these are specific vans yeah yeah do you see the end there's doors that open on the ends well right. i can't really see them yeah but, uh, this one doesn't have it it's actually the only one that does is the studio uh, that side yeah if you go yeah. if you look at the studio that's actually double door a double door cargo door configuration ah. and you see this uh this can be patched it's got it's actually two different containers and it, there's a gasket in between them so you can put a patch there and yeah, uh, ship them out. Metal, metal uh, panels that bolt in here, and then to seal them, there's actually an inflatable bladder between this van and that van mm. that we have to every couple of days make sure it stays inflated. I if see. you it, it, when you come in the back door, if you look, there's a plaque there that says these are actually good fine Canadian vans. All right. Built in British Columbia. Thank you. Are Jeff, we if you wanted to, could you still take them apart? And oh, yeah. Separately? Yes. Oh, well. It'd be a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. It takes two guys a couple of, two or three, well, Dan's done it a couple of times, put the panels in and taking them out. It's you can see the uh, cable trunk lines coming through the each side there. Yeah. They're designed so that they can actually be used separately. You could physically position this control van with the ROV and video in one part of the, the vessel and then take the science row, put that someplace else, and leave the studio at home or put it someplace else. Portable vans. Yep. How was everyone's Easter dinner? We had a... Oh, man. Tell me, tell me, Ryan. It was great. We had a just quite the spread. We did. We had oysters. We had lobster. Sushi. Turkey. T -tur turkey. We had uh, steaks. Grilled shrimp. Grilled shrimp. Potato. What? It wasn't. Is it flatbread that they made? Pita. Pita bread. Yeah. Pita bread from the grill to. And, and fantastic towel rabbits. What kind of bread was it? Ta no, towel. They, oh, yeah. They folded the towels into rabbits for us. Oh, yeah. That towel was rabbits. rabbits that were just the cutest thing ever. I want to, when I get the um, OET phone that posts on our Instagram and stuff. I'm going to put up some pictures of, unless that's already been done. Maybe it's already been done. We'll see. I'm going to make sure to get it out there. Okay. 
Are we ready for intros? Sure. Okay. There's a viewer that's requesting um, when we introduce ourselves. Um, everyone share their most memorable holiday or birthday at sea. <clears throat> I will begin. My name is Malanai Kane Kohivinui. I live in Kahalu'u on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. And my most memorable holiday on a ship is Easter. Because it's the only one I've had <laughs> from on yesterday. A ship. <laughs> and so they have something to do. That was fun. <laughs> Okay, Ryan, your turn. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Ryan Gasparo. I'm a graduate student at Temple University in Philadelphia. Yeah, I was going to do it for you. And, um, and yeah, my most memorable holiday at sea, unoriginal answer, but it was Easter 2022. <laughs> Woohoo! Dwight? Yeah, so let's see. I'm Dwight Coleman. I'm the expedition leader and uh, marine geologist from University of Rhode Island. And um, I've had a few birthdays at sea. Nothing really incredibly memorable, at least that I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, not, not really a holiday either, but uh, one tradition we have on the ship is whenever we cross the equator, we have a big uh, equator crossing ceremony that we're also not supposed to talk about. <laughs> mm. So those, that's probably the most m memorable sort of fun event uh, that we have on Nautilus. Awesome. Thank you. Were we at all close to crossing the equator on this trip? Uh, no, not even close. Dang. We are crossing, however, the Tropic of Cancer or Capricorn? Right. I, I yeah, that's what it was. I'm uh, having a hard time remember. I think we did already. <laughs> <laughs> we will cross it again. Or Probably. Yeah. We have to cross it to get back to all. Oh. Kotachi, would you like to share? Sure. My name is Kotachi. I'm sitting in the front row on the right. I'm the navigator, or I believe uh, Ho'oloke? Ho'okele. Ho'okele, damn it. Thank you. <laughs> um, my favorite holiday at sea has got to be Easter, the one we just had. Awesome. Uh. Did you pause? What's that? Oh, sorry. Um, just playing with the <coughs> controls there. I'm Dan. I'm sitting in the uh, Hercules chair next to Katachi. Uh, thanks, everyone, for all the happy birthday wishes. Most memorable holiday at sea. Um, had a few Christmases at sea. Those are pretty memorable. Just uh, probably for the... Uh, homesickness I experienced during those times. <laughs> Everyone at home all in the Christmas holiday spirit. It's just another day on the boat for us. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'll go next. I'm Paul. I'm the ROV pilot for Argus and Atalanta. Um, and I had just missed Halloween last year, so that was kind of I've heard that one can be fun. But I don't think I've been out for any other holidays other than Easter yesterday, so. And I'm Jeff sitting to the left of Paul in the shadows, the video guy. Um, we had Thanksgiving. Normally the Nautilus season doesn't go into the holiday season, right? You know, previous years that I've been on board, we always stop before that. So we had Thanksgiving last year on board, and um, the cooks went 
I mean, it was fantastic. It was great. They did a Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving that was just fantastic. So. It was pretty awesome. Um, and I, th I want to say it was almost like one of our cooks' first time cooking a traditional American turkey. And because he was asking all of us, how is it? How is it? And it's like, this is fantastic. This is great. It was moist. It was great. So, um, I it, not on a boat, but I had a birthday in Bulgaria once by myself. That was kind of fun, just because the Bulgarians make the most incredible desserts. And I, I had to treat myself to two of them because they were so good. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Um, do we have the ability to change the laser colors? <laughs> no. Awesome. Um, That'd be cool, though. Do our own little Pink Floyd laser light show. <laughs> it's... Um, <laughs> Can speed back up if you want, Paul. You're yeah. slowing down just for the transfer there, or what? What's happening? No, no, you were slower. Oh, sorry. I um, <laughs> slowed down to bring the delta back to par. I'll full stick it again. What is everyone's pet names, and what do you actually call them? You want to go first? You have a pet? I don't have a pet of my own, but my mom has a pet. That is, her name is Audrey Hepburn Onapali Hauliuli Oke Ko'olao. And we actually call her Ko'o. That's, um, yep, yeah, I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> yeah, so I've got, I've got a dog named Bo Diddley. Um, Otherwise known as, he has many AKAs, including Bob, Bobby, Bobbert, <laughs> and about a, a thousand others. I'm not going to say on air. Sadly, I don't have a pet anymore. They both died in the last couple of years, but oh, uh, that is sad. I used to have a dog named Pippin, oh. um, named after a character, a hobbit in uh, Lord of the Rings, Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we called her Pip. This is Christopher jumping in on SCF for a little bit, relieving Mal and I so she can do an interaction. I have a dog named Desmarestia, which is a genus of algae. <laughs> Nice. We call her Desi for short. Black Lab. Well, welcome to our shift. Yeah, good to have you with us, Christopher. Yeah, thanks. I also named my children after marine life. <laughs> nice. My oldest daughter is Alaria, which is a kelp. And my youngest daughter is Alicia, which is the genus of a nudibranch. No kidding. Nice. A photosynthetic cool. nudibranch, a really cool one. Nice. Do your children know that yet? Yeah, they know. <laughs> I write poems about it. Very cool. Are they marine life fans? You yeah, took them in, in the intertidal? Yeah. Yep. I have a 100-pound, 10-year-old German Shepherd at home. We, it's all black. We call him Angus or a black dog. He also comes to black. And his favorite pastime is watching cows. <laughs> he likes to guard the gate. Do you have any cows or do your neighbors have cows? Uh, both. We have uh, so far this year about six babies on the ground. Wow. Uh, so I think four four bull calves and two heifers. I'm not sure what the count is at the moment. Red Angus and Angus uh, also have black cows and red cows. And a uh, now, let's see, 16, 15 year old milk cow. Wow. wow. What happens if, do you ever let the dog in with the cows? Will they interact? 
Yeah, they do. The cows, uh, the calves are really curious. They'll come up and they actually chase the dogs. Oh. And, uh, you have to be careful when the when the young babies are in there. The mamas will get quite aggressive with the dogs and chase them out. Mm -hmm. All of our dogs are um, they're raised around the cows, so they they re you know they respect them. They get out of their way. Easily. Yeah. We have the 4-H steers often tied up in the barn, so the dogs are walking around through their feet and over and when they're behind them. And it's part of uh, getting them acclimated to go to the county fair and be around kids and animals. And I have a uh, viewer question that I can't answer. Uh, are there any married couples on the ship or any relationships that have started on the ship? Ready? Not touching that one. Nope. <laughs> there is uh, some famous stories when ROV pilot meets PhD scientist. <laughs> I have uh, some friends um, from uh, other systems I work with, and uh, yeah, in both cases, they. Um, they met on the boat and have uh, several kids now running around at home. And uh, one of my good friends is a stay-at-home dad, and his uh, and mom is back on the boat uh, doing her thing. Another question is, are there any arch enemies on the ship? <laughs> uh, I think electricity and seawater. That, that would be my... Uh, yeah. yeah. Call on that one. The ship and seawater, the vehicles and seawater. ROV operators and ground faults. Yeah. Our arch enemy. We've been battling a particularly pesky one on our craft manipulator. Questions coming in. Uh, is the Grafana data actually real time, as in using faster protocols or different networks? It seems to send data over TCP, which makes sense, but I would expect the stream to have a significantly higher latency than the board because of YouTube. I have no idea what that means. It's but if um, any of you do. <laughs> it is real time. Uh, we use it here in the front row and the back row. And um, if there is any latency, it's it's milliseconds, which in the big scheme of a ROV hanging on a wire several kilometers below the vessel is, is not an issue. For example, the depth or the position. The only um, latency that's really an issue for us would be the controls in the video, both of which are, are real time for us. They're over fiber optic system. As far as the uh, latency of the uh, Grafana that the folks at home are seeing, I believe it's also, it's, uh, if there is any, any latency, it's, it's, uh, it's minimal. It's probably like a one second update rate or something like that. Maybe, yeah, I, I mean, 
Well, we have a, what's a late, how you put this? There's a certain element of latency on the ship, which is very minimal, but we're bouncing what the folks at home are seeing off of a satellite that then goes through the Inner Space Center where blah, 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 and then quite often it'll go back up on a satellite or it's on, you know, so it's impossible to determine what the actual latency of what, you know, when I speak and you hear it, or when you see the Grafana updates or anything like that, it's, it is seconds. It's not, you know, a half second or anything. It's, it's probably single digit seconds. So Dan's forgetting about the biggest source of latency on the Grafana display which is uh, oh. <laughs> when we forget to turn on the refresh. We, uh, when we swapped the vehicles, um, the Grafana was set to just not refresh, and somehow both Dan and I interpreted that as the Grafana didn't work with uh, Atalanta instead of Argus. And so there we were for like our entire first shift, just <laughs> the Grafana doesn't work. <laughs> we're so used to it. What are we going to do? So embarrassing. <laughs> and the, it's so uh, frustrating because <laughs> yeah, we're very spoiled by the yeah the giant numbers uh, laid out in a sensible format. And uh, immediately Kylie comes on on the next shift and goes, "Have you just tried, you know, <laughs> changing the refresh rate to, from never to one second? <laughs> 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 no, we hadn't thought of that. That's a uh, a custom button that the um, the authors have put in for the one second refresh rate, I, I believe. It was also an interesting one. It doesn't, if you're looking at it on your mobile device, the one second refresh rate option doesn't show up in portrait mode. Oh. So I was uh, complaining to one of our data engineers, I'm like, this, why isn't Grafana updating? So we used it on our devices when we're on the deck or, you know, in the mess, keeping an eye on what the depth is, and in particular when the system was coming up. And I handed him my phone, and he did something and handed it back to me. I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Aha moment. For those of you just joining us, we are currently descending with our ROVs, Atalanta and Hercules, on Mercury Seamount, currently at a depth of 1,178 meters. Plan to end up at 2,130 meters and work our way up the Seamount from there. Expected dive time of 24 hours. Half an hour to the seabed. Yeah, that's what it says. I was just looking at that, and uh, in our dive plans, we always use 20 meters a minute uh, on the descent, but we're doing about 30 now, right? Yeah, we're actually breaking the speed limit. <laughs> we're in the orange zone. Bonus time. We've tried going slower on the winch. That doesn't work, so we're trying faster. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Should I adjust the future dive plans for, for that number? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Highly likely to get a speeding ticket from the bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, pause momentarily. I've Speed gotten one of those to try already. <laughs> catch up to uh, Hercules. I could slow down if you want instead. Your call. Yeah, we should keep it pegged at 30. To okay. We're par now, so I'll set my descent rate properly. We have a very Nautilus-specific joke sent in. If the umbilical cable falls off the shelf and breaks, whose fault is it? The ground's fault. Oh. oh. <laughs> that one's going to stick. 
Interesting question. Have we tried uh, Flex Seal brand spray for waterproofing, and does it hold up at pressure and low temperature salt water? No, we, uh, to my knowledge, we have not. But I, uh, every time I walk down the as seen on TV aisle at the drugstore, <laughs> I, I think about that. <laughs> we have tried some. Uh, what is it? Uh, alien tape. Hmm. Also, is the as seen on TV aisle in the drugstore. That seems to be working. We're a bit concerned about the uh, temperature changes. We have another question coming in. How do you pick where to dive to? What criteria do you use? I believe we use the uh, map on a wall with dart method. Is that correct? <laughs> Uh, that's a good good question. There's a huge amount of planning that goes into picking the dive site. Uh, all of that, thankfully, is above my pay grade. <laughs> that would be Dwight's uh, domain back there. Sorry, I was reading something. What was the question? How, How do, do we pick, pick our dive sites? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so um, there's sort of a committee. There's uh, the, the group of uh, scientists who are involved in um, basically coordinating all the science missions for OET and um, the, the lead scientists that are involved uh, in the expedition. So uh, Chris Kelly, uh, from formerly from the University of Hawaii, uh, has been involved with the Nautilus program for many years. And uh, he did the mapping out here um, last year and also uh, was involved in another expedition near the monument um, and inside the expansion of the monument um, a couple years ago and so we've been partnered with Chris on many projects and he's the shore-based lead scientist for this expedition so a lot of the biological goals for the dive planning was were set by Chris um, and then Dr. Beth Orcutt from uh, Bigelow Lab uh, in Maine was um, awarded uh, NOAA funding for continuing her research in partnership with uh, OET and, and the Nautilus program. And so she's another uh, co-lead scientist, and she's on the ship with us, one of the lead scientists on shore. And then um, there's a, a whole team of geologists that we've been working with for many years um, who are very interested in uh, volcanic, uh, uh, understanding the volcanic origin of seamounts and um, mapping, uh, new unexplored areas of the Pacific Ocean and diving on these features that have never been dove on before. So that team of geologists has interest in collecting rocks for mm -hmm. geochronology yeah, or yeah. age dating and for geochemistry to look at the hotspot origin of these features and for understanding critical mineral crusts and uh, nodules. So that team of geologists also gets involved in the dive planning. So. It's done by committee mostly and a lot of people involved. For coral communities, the general rule is steep slopes, high relief, elevated relative to its surroundings. And so uh, the feature we're diving on today is a great example of that, a sort of steep ridge that we're going to make our way up. And generally, it, it jives with the geology, too, because um, the corals like to live on rocks, and the rocks are exposed uh, for the geologists to sample. So um, it usually goes hand in hand, uh, which is nice. Synergy. Yeah, what did I see? We've picked up 90 kilograms of rocks. Yeah. Already? I oh, know. wow. That's a lot. And we're not even halfway through the dives. Or maybe just around, just about exactly. Yeah, I hate to be the UPS guy that has to carry all those boxes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think we are the UPS people oh, yeah, for that is also getting true. it off, off the ship. So. Pretty much. Everything gets put on a pallet, and then we let forklifts do the heavy, heavy lifting. Mm. And then it's shipped as freight, so... Sometimes UPS is involved, but um, 
different division than you're used to. <laughs> Definitely not as much weight, but the biological sample fridge is getting pretty filled up too. Yeah. What sample number are we up to, do we know? Um, I want to say we're in like the 80s or 90s. In the 80s, yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. By my count, we have at least six more dives this expedition, well, including this one. Maybe seven. It depends if we double up uh, a dive on one of the seamounts. Um, more or less one a day for the remainder going through the last dive thereabouts on April 27th. And then we'll have about a three day steam, little, little more than three day steam home or back to Honolulu. So we're just looking at the timing of these dives and the weather and the weather looks really good. So I think we've done I think we've done six. This is twenty. We've done five dives, so six more. Yeah, so this we is could six. we could potentially double double up on everything, or more wow. than double up on everything. Wow! So we'll see if we break uh, two hundred kilos of rocks <laughs> and uh, you know one hundred and seventy samples. Cycle the minute. Yeah, that'll be a lot. Just on off with the blue button, or uh, run it. One viewer uh, commented that AIS shows other special vehicles near the Nautilus. Are we aware of what other research vessels are near us? Hmm. Haven't checked uh, recently, actually. Um, the uh, University of Hawaii ships are, are often doing work uh, in the general area, but um, I'm not sure about others. But uh, certainly on the bridge, they're aware of all the ships near near us that have AIS, and uh, we can track and get more information about those vessels through the um, one of the ship's navigation systems or uh, radar systems. And if we need to communicate with those ships, we can. But I haven't seen too many. Someone saw a ship the other day. I haven't seen one. <laughs> I saw it after our shift the other night. It was out on the horizon. Yeah, I've actually seen two. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Not too many, though. Of course, I guess they're, they're required to avoid the monument when they're transiting, so they tend to stay away from where we are, unless they're going in and out of Honolulu. Yeah, I think we were still north of the monument when I saw the ship. Yeah. Really, they they can't even uh, drive through the waters. They're meant to not navigate through the... Right. Well. Got a question for the Hercules crew. Uh, if um, we have the two arms on the Hercules, and the question is, why is the right arm uh, used so rarely, I guess? You were right, pilot left. Yeah, the um, the two arms, uh, the one that Paul is exercising now on the way down is um, spatially correspondent teleoperated manipulator. So it works in, uh, has several valves in it and posi position sensors and a uh, kinematic replica of the arm a controller that Paul's using to control it right now. The arm on the left side is um, powered by solenoid valves. It's what we call a rate arm, so it has uh, functions that are individually oh. powered on and off. That's the ground fault. That's the bender. Here, I'll turn it off. That's the bender sending the DC signal to Anyways, the uh, the rate powered arm is more like a uh, uh, like an excavator or a backhoe, where you have to individually move the uh, each function to get the end effector where you want it. With uh, with this manipulator, you just basically 
move the end effector where you want it and all the other functions correspond to, to get you there. So we have much more control over this one and it's uh, much quicker to reach out and pick up a sample or a, you know, a rock. Or it's also a lot, it has a better dexterity, more range of motions and uh, all the functions. We use the uh, left arm quite a bit when we're doing uh, work for um, ONC, the Cable Observatory. And uh, it's typically used when we fly up to uh, an instrument platform and we'll uh, grab on with the left hand manipulator while we're uh, doing connectors or making connections or securing cables or placing instruments on and off the uh, instrument platform. It's basically uh, like if you're walking down the stairs, you put your left hand on the on the stairwell to uh, on the rail to to guide yourself as you're walking down the stairs. That's kind of how we use it. Can I keep playing with it, or should we? Oh, uh, I need to. Yeah, you need the thrust. Yeah, you're hogging flow. I'm 20 meters above you now. Oh, yeah. Another question coming in. Uh, if we discover a new species, uh, who's it named after? Or who gets to name it? Um, generally, I mean, I, I don't know actually that specifically, but I know that generally um, people often name them after um, higher ups on the ship or like expedition leaders or say a chief scientist. Uh, I think the general etiquette is to not name it after yourself. Uh, but other than that, I don't know uh, many of the sort of nomenclatural rules of naming species. There's uh, some species that are named after the uh, ROV or HOV that found them. For example, we see the purple Victor Gorgia. Yep. It's named after a uh, French system. Oh, and, really? Uh, there's, um, I didn't know that. there's an Alvini something. There's uh, yeah, yeah. some uh, snails called Alvinaconcla <laughs> that are uh, common around the hydrothermal vents in uh, Marianas Beckhart on the Tonga Trench. That's where I, I've seen them. So a big picture of them in the, in the hallway there. But I'm not sure if those are the same ones or different, similar, but. I have a vague memory of seeing like a hercules -y species. I think that exists. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know which ones are named after Hercules. Interesting fact I heard the other day, I didn't know that Hercules has been down to the Titanic. Yeah, I think that's kind of a personal goal is one day to beyond for a shipwreck. Can you slow down just a bit, Paul? I can yeah. I have trouble catching up to you there. Can you talk about the uh, cable that connects the ship to our ROVs? What kind of cable is it? It's an armored steel cable. Yeah, it's made by, uh, I believe this one's made by a company called Rochester. Which is, uh, Rochester and Nexons are uh, probably the two big players in that in that area. It has uh, stain three layers of stainless steel braids that surround a, um, a cord inside that's probably about the size of your uh, average outdoor extension cord and similar to an outdoor extension cord it has uh, three conductors in it as well as a uh, small steel tube about the size of one of those conductors that's full of uh, fibers and inside the steel tube is also um, a bunch of silicone grease to, uh, as we call a water block
There's uh, 7,300 meters of that cable on a uh, spooled on a giant winch in the belly of Nautilus, giant traction winch. Which is, uh, let's see, image you see here in front of me that we keep kind of an eagle eye on on the uh, ascent and the descent. Oh, ground fault, 14 kilohms. Yeah, you can power it down for now. That's fun. Do you know if we have any video of that uh, Herc's visit to the Titanic? I do not know. I'm, I'm sure there's uh, some images and video in the archives. Dwight could probably oh, speak yeah. to that. Yep. Uh, I got some on my laptop, actually. Uh, it was in 2004. We were on the Ron Brown. It's before Nautilus existed. Um, we spent a couple of weeks with uh, one of the really early uh, NOAA ocean exploration funded expeditions. It um, was combined with a couple of other projects uh, to um, explore seamounts in the North Atlantic. And um, it was really the first use of telepresence technology as we kind of designed it. We did a lot of outreach. We did a live, uh, live broadcast to National Geographic Channel from the Titanic. And, Speed um, up again, Paul. Broad, yeah. Did a bunch of dives to kind of document the uh, debris fields and take a look at the deterioration of the ship due to salvage operations and, and uh, um, other uh, sort of uh, degradation of the steel hull from with these rustical formations which contain microbes, which uh, are similar to the little rusticles we see on some of these rocks, I guess. So what, it's cool, was, uh, cool project. Was Argus also in yep. play at that time? Argus was, yeah. Um, the vehicles were, Argus and Herc were, well, Argus was built in like 2001 or so and worked a few years with Little Hercules. Mm -hmm. And then Hercules came online in 2003 and I think our first project there was in the in the Black Sea, if I remember correctly, in the Mediterranean, yeah. And um, then we didn't really incorporate telepresence until 2004. And then in 2005, we did a big project with the University of Washington, Deb Kelly, in Lost City, and uh, returned to that hydrothermal vent field on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And that was really the first full-blown telepresence expedition where Deb and her team were based at in Seattle and uh, directed the the dive operations from there. Well, I didn't know it Hertz yeah. also been to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Yep. What vessel was that on then? That was also Ron Brown. We, uh -huh. did, we used Ron Brown two or three years in a row. Two, anyway, yeah. And uh, that was also... That mission to Lost City was also combined with another seamount project. Um, these were um, even before the Okeanos days, so we were kind of combined with the, uh, that program to uh, utilize Her the Hercules ROV to, to do other projects for other scientists that had NOAA funding. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tim Shank was one of the early users, uh, Peter Oster. And we did a couple projects, one called Mountains in the Sea, and the other called uh, Deep Atlantic Stepping Stones, mostly looking at deep sea corals. Les Watling was also involved. And those were the first kind of telepresence-enabled uh, ocean exploration missions. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge doesn't get uh, near the dive time as the Endeavor event field it's just yep. two weeks to get to from any landmass. Right? Mm. Okeanos Explorer is going back to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge this summer. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen those cruise plans yet, but um, it should be pretty good. I assume they're going to some hydrothermal vent sites. I have a video question. Uh, are there any long-term public video archives 
YouTube tends to delete the live stream after 12 hours. After that 12 hour spot, is there a place someone can go to watch Nautilus videos? Right. There it is. Um, I wish I knew off the tip of my tongue how to find it. It, uh, it. it takes us a week or two to get everything processed, but we put whole dive recordings on YouTube and it's on the OET YouTube channel. So you can search, uh, if you're subscribed to that ch YouTube channel, you should be able to find them. But they're not often available immediately. It takes us a little while to um, edit, edit the clips uh, appropriately for the permanent archive, so to speak. Yeah, I'm subscribed to the channel, and I get a, I get a notice when a new uh, video is uploaded. Oh, good. Yeah, I should do cool. the same. Yeah, we are one of our groups back at the Inner Space Center at URI. Um, take care of that for OET. And now um, Jonathan's group at OET is adding in, uh, as part of the workflow, uh, the event logs or the C log um, oh, comments yeah. as chapters. And so you can actually search the YouTube um, dive file by uh, uh, things that have been logged, that's and it would jump to that chapter. That's a good so, feature. Yeah, it's really. Uh, promising it's, it's a lot of extra steps and we're trying to make it easier <laughs> yeah <laughs> but so um will that have um, kml files with um ah image links in that's there, a good idea that a yeah i don't think that has been discussed but we should the port and the portal that we're trying to evolve the science communication of uh, the um the science portal skip um the one that we're logged into here on the ship for uh chat and event log and uh or chat and um, sort of, I put the dive plans and the sit reps in there too. Um, we're trying to turn that into more of a replay um, functionality, so you can mm -hmm. go back in time. You can certainly see the dive tracks and the cruise tracks, and you can see uh, captures, still captures. We don't have the video fully uh, there for playback yet, but um, you know, as we evolve the science portal, f we want to have all that built right in yeah we we've done a few uh it takes a, a bit of work but you can um you can overlay the bathymetry in um, google earth and then uh have a kml file with all the still images embedded. yeah so you can replay the dive and see the rov fly through that's the a great idea bathymetry yeah, that's cool. and then you can pause it all the and click on all the like a thumbnail will pop up as they do on Google Earth, then you click on that and you get yeah. the, full, the full image. Very cool stuff. Yeah, we're trying to make all this easier for you know folks like Christopher who could use this in their classroom and mm -hmm. um, you know without a lot of effort and pro having to process data, just have it at, at our fingertips for education and outreach and science and still some work to be done for sure. There's another parallel effort with all of our mapping data go into a Esri portal, uh, which is really nice. So um, there's a team on shore working on that. And uh, even quicker than the video is available, you can actually go in and see areas that we've mapped, which is nice. We have yeah. another viewer asking, does it ever get scary on the ship during storms? Depends how many birds are being blown <laughs> blown at us, I guess. That was that was probably the most frightening moment I've had yeah. aboard this vessel. <laughs> the invasion of the boobies. <laughs> was it Paul that was it you that sent the no, who went oh. Someone Jake. Jake, yeah. Jake grabbed the video and said they're they're trying to breach the hangar. <laughs> <laughs> we have these windows that are like second story in the in the hangar and <laughs> there's a little ledge and they were all landed there looking and then they were all uh, peeking under the <laughs> under the hangar door because it, it closes and there's a bit of a gap at the bottom for the tether so these little heads were peeking in there it was, quite, it was dark and very stinky We've seen our share of bad weather, but I, I wouldn't characterize it as scary. It's uh, uncomfortable. Um, the ship is very safe, and we run run away from our the storms as best we can, so we don't have to stay in the middle of them. 
It's actually quite quite beautiful when the uh, the winds gusting over 35 and 40. <laughs> it uh, creates spin drift, which yeah. basically tears the white horses, the top of the white caps, off the waves and blows them across the yeah the ocean. Mm. So you get these beautiful white streaks and uh, lots of spray. And we were transiting up north from San Pedro and, and hit strong winds and everybody was sitting in the lounge with all three all three monitors in the lounge or in the yeah, in the lounge had the bow camera on it and every time the bow camera got splashed you'd hear this <laughs> they're all cheering the bow camera getting splashed <laughs> yeah it's quite impressive when the when the bow dips and there's lots of weight i've been up everywhere. in the vans i think on that same transit and and you could hear the spin drift bouncing off the side of the vans, at which point you're going, you know, maybe I don't want to be up here because I'm going to get wet when I go downstairs. Yeah, I've I've been nailed on all of the Nautilus stairs thinking I you know, can walk through there in my civvies and <laughs> my pajamas on with my cup of coffee and wind up just drenched. <laughs> and usually, uh, Unless it's a few chuckles from people who are standing in a relatively sheltered spot. We have a viewer that wrote in that the YouTube uh, has a separate channel called Nautilus Live Dive Recordings, and that's where you can go to find the oh, uh, good. Yep. full dive. I was about two seconds away from getting absolutely drenched after our first recovery. I was heading up the uh, stairs to the back deck and a big wave came and splashed the, uh, the side like right before I got there. And we're really spoiled on this vessel. Some um, research vessel I've, I've worked on are a wet deck. So we're here we can get away with wearing a low top steel toes that are closer to sneakers as opposed to uh, high tops that are you have to lace them up and uh, keep your boots dry. So uh, just heads up everyone we're probably about four minutes away from the bottom. Looking for altitude. Oh we have DVL. 100 meters. Another quick question. Is Let's it harder to develop uh, your sea legs when you get on the ship or your land legs when you get off? Uh, For me, land legs when I get off. Yeah. Room is yeah, yeah the, the, the dock days. rock lasts for a couple of days. When you're taking a shower for the first time, yeah. and, uh, it's like <laughs> you're, the you're, shower's not moving. Yeah, you're hanging on to you. You got a hand on the wall of the shower, and you're going, "This is my house. It's not moving. Why do you have a hand on the side of your shower?" I got a lesson from our second mate about the right way to take a shower on a ship. <laughs> yeah. Like hold on to the the shower head like a rock star. And <laughs> plant plant your feet. Don't grab one the one hand there. lather. <laughs> I was going to say, don't grab the hot water pipe. Don't grab the hot water. Yeah, yeah. Which way are we going to go, Katachi? North or south? Looking like we're going to go north, right? Yeah, it should be north. Roger. Um, you should be able to uh, engage auto heading there, Paul, and uh, two zero your 6 8, didn't you? He must have. You can uh, spin around to clockwise to the north. Yeah, the 6-8 was zeroed at the, yeah, everything was zeroed when we launched. I didn't have to, but it was already there. Yeah, Reg. Should be able to spin to the north and come around to while we're coming down here. Judging by the contour lines, you want to be on the right side of the ridge? Uh, 
Um, that's up to, uh, that's up to Dwight in the background. I'm going to pause on answering questions for a bit while we reach the bottom so that everybody can focus on what they need to do. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you not to slam the vehicle into the seabed while answering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get kind of distracted on them. It's only only happened though. Almost happened. It has happened. Usually because I'm in the middle of some diatribe and I forget what button to push. Mike, are you coming down easy? Uh, It's back to the uh, the old way. Yeah, it's interesting. It's worth noting in the red book when we get a chance. Raj. Sorry, I tugged on you a little bit. Okay, thanks. Nice to come down looking uphill. <coughs> okay, Paul, if you want to come all stop there and get the manipulator out. Roger, we better clean up our mess up here then. <laughs> or not. Uh, 10 kilo ohms. Yeah, any K's are, K's are okay. That good position? Yeah, it should do. I help you with that, Jeff. Yeah, that works. Yeah, maybe tilt our arm down a little bit. How about that? Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Uh, no, I'm back up. I'll just tilt the camera. Or tilt the camera. It's the uh, arm is basically. Oh, is being moving uh, itself. Return the. Uh, yeah, bender off. Yeah, I got it. You got so, it. Right. Yeah. All right, you ready? Let me come back down a little bit. I floated by up there. You good? Uh, just want to be a little closer. 
to the seabed for anything. When it real white balance. Water's water. Roger. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. All right, going black. Dan switching you over to Dead Reckoning. Roger. We're good on the arm? Yeah, we're good. All right, I'll stow it. Yes, please. Unless you want to fly like that with it. <laughs> no. Uh, you have your porch lights on. I don't think so. Let's see. Nope. They are not on. Okay. I think we just tilted up a screen. All right. There. So we'll take a little time for you guys to get settled and do your engineering tasks. Now when you're good to go? Uh, Paul's got to record a few bits and kibbles here and... Uh, yeah, you're coming down. Um, yeah, you want to do the gauges there? And I did them about 15 minutes ago. Can I just do another visual? Yeah. It's good to get out on bottom number, but if they're the same, that's, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it looks like they're the same. Yeah, everything looks good. Are we on DBL now, Touch? Yes, sir. Right there. Do the double button here. Um, do you want me to turn the uh, craft back off or bender back on or just leave it? You can turn it back on, turn the craft off and bender on. What was that? Yeah, put the upper monitor to high pack survey. Where's that? Uh, on mine, it's here. Oh, okay. Bender back on. Right there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is a much longer dive. Uh, we're going to try to go 4.2 kilometers uh, in 24 hours. So the waypoints are spread farther apart. I feel like we're already seeing some bamboo caros there. Yeah, potentially. Hard to tell. Definitely some whip-like ox coral. There was a question about how far apart are the dots from each other, so I'm pretty sure they're 10 centimeters apart from each other. That gives us a good gauge on how big or how small come certain down things a little are. More for me. Yeah, come down with me. Nice rock to come down on it. I think every dive we come right down on life like this. Pretty awesome. Okay, if uh, you're interested in any zooms here, if not, I'm going to kind of swing around to the north. Ready for ship move? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. uh, come around to the north. We're going to head north, I'm assuming. What's going to be our, uh, our bearing once we get going there? Kitachi. What's up? Which way will you uh, move once we start going? Zero one five. Right. Yeah, we may want to pick up a, a rock sample for um, 
for looking at the crusts. So let's think about that before we um, move. Copy that. If, can you pan up and go back to that little area of coral when you get the chance? Yeah. kind of curious about these really dark colored spots on the rock. Uh oh. Hang on. Come down another five for me. Oh, well, maybe I got enough here. A zoom if you can. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky, let's move the, move the ship uh, 20 meters east, please. Bridge, this is not. It's kind of interesting, like it's different from the. Can we move the ship 20 down? meters east, please? Yeah, it kind of looks like it was like yeah. sheared or something. particular area you want to get a close-up of them? Yeah, go, go pan back up a little to where the coral, the base of the coral is attached to that black rock. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, if we see something loose that has that similar color, uh, I'd be interested in it. Some loose, uh, or maybe something up above this little ledge. Mm -hmm. Want to uh, go just a bit wider there for us, Jeff? That's good. Can we look up here? Yep. What's up? Push in just a bit there. We'll get to move just to we're, get a little bit more room here. We're moving. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, this might be, uh, see that crack under the one right there where the lasers are on? Uh, yeah. Might be able to get a piece of that. There's also this one up there, but that's pretty big, isn't it? You want me to start poking and finding out? Actually, those look like they might yeah. be pretty good. Yeah. Want to try for that? Yeah, turn the bender off first. Uh. Yep. Bender off. Craft power and valve coming on. Right. It's hard to say if it's attached or not. Looks like a good possible victim there. Comes. Do you think we're uh, within range, ready for unstow? Yeah, I'm just uh, pushing in on the rocks right here. So. Okay. If that's all one piece, it's probably t it might be too big, but let's let's try it. I think that big piece right in bubbles is, but it's a big piece. I'm gonna turn on the porch light, yeah.
Is this a rock for Beth? Yeah. Okay. Beauty. Beautiful. So yeah. Quite a piece, but interesting piece. Yeah. It's not as big as I thought it was. Excuse me, oh. Mr. Spence. Oh, it is friable, yeah. isn't it? It is, is it definitely a rock or is it an organism? Yeah. Yeah. Spin it a little. I think it's this crust there. I would say rock. I mean, yeah. uh, go ahead and zoom but in, Jeff. Yeah, All right. I think that looks like a pretty good sample, actually. Different. Can I get the lasers on, please? They are. You have to zoom back out to get the lasers. All right. Oh, they're there. there. Spin. Do a little spin, yeah. Oh. No, Beth Beth is actually uh, chiming in from the lounge and it's not ideal for her. Yeah, uh, too friable. Oh, so let's forget Drop this it. one. All right. Might be some other loose ones in there. Right to the left there. This looks like a brick. To see if what see what's loose here. That's okay. The one you just dropped. The one behind it. So when you just dropped, is it? I think so. This yeah. is an easy one. We can we can collect this and um, as the deepest sample on the dive uh, and store it in the starboard bio for Val. Okay. Oh, okay. So the one that I just had and dropped. No, this one's good. I think um, th that one, that other one, looked pretty altered to me. So I think this would be a better, a better one. I do think, I think that this one is the one that I just dropped. Oh, was it? Yeah. This one uh, to the right. If you go to the right of the sponge, see the little nub sticking out there. Touch that one. I'm not sure I know which one you're talking this about. This one? Okay. No, just to the left of where he circled. Come down and touch. Towards the vehicle a little bit more. Yeah, that one. Nope. And, uh, right here in front of the vehicle, you can touch around a bit. Touch this one right here in front. Which one? The platter in front. Hmm? The platter in front here. This one? Left of that. This big thing? Yeah. No. Too big. <laughs> Maybe one of these? That's kind of yeah. far away. Well, that's, I think, within reach. Touch a few of those if you want. I think we're just kind of back at where we started here. Go uh, uphill a little bit more. Where you picked up the first one, some of the other ones in there might be this. Nope, everything's looking pretty. Yeah. Well, All right, let's get let's get the one that you dropped. Yeah. I think that'll be fine. Okay. Those those few in there that you you might poke in there. So there's this one. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I think the one you dropped is the only this one. Oh god, it's this one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I saw some other ones move around in there, but... Alright. Do we 
already have all the uh, video of it we need. Let's get some video again just to make sure, because possibly not in the same arc. Uh, Dwight? Can we zoom a little bit? Just see Beth's message? Yeah. Okay. This this will be for Val. Oh, this is Starboard. for Val. Yeah. Okay. Spin as slow as you can. Okay. Looks good. Thank you. All right. Where is this one going? Starboard. Starboard box A. One of the smaller On ones, probably. Yeah. It'll fit in, yeah. In there, Jeff, while he's spelling the rock. Nice. Nice looking glass sponge here. All right, you guys can probably think about the ship move now if you want. Copy that. You can uh, start it moving if you want. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we get 20 meters at 045, please? <laughs> Sampling. Got a little Christ of Gorge right there. <laughs> Sample salvos are taking a double tap to uh, get them to take. What sample number are we at? Um, we just oh. finished 86. We're on 87 right now. Uh, the rock we just grabbed was 86? Oh, yeah. Thank you. come upon some really good coral diversity here. I've seen quite a few chrysogorgids, some uh, whip-like bamboo corals, hemichorallium, oval gum coral. Do you want the uh, power off and bender back on? Yes, please. Primnoid fan coral, the white right. one back there. Bring your head to uh, zero one five for me. See that hairy glass sponge, Walteria. Is there a failsafe if you would lose communication with the ROVs? Is there some kind of insurance line that we have connected to them perhaps uh no but the um the usbl transponders have the uh, batteries in them and we have the capability to uh, switch to what we call transponder mode or acoustic mode mm. so we can still determine the uh, depth and position of both the vehicles in the event that they become detached or that we lose power. And, um, that happens occasionally, and we do uh, what we call a dark vehicle recovery. We, uh, Hercules is positively buoyant, uh, per partially for that reason, but partially so we float and we don't sink mm. on the seabed. And we simply uh, bring everything up and then kind of. Uh, move the ship forward 
and uh, reel them in like you would a fish. All right, I think while we're waiting for this ship move, you can uh, pan and drive around a little more and explore the area. Yeah, it uh, looks pretty great. We kicked the ship into gear a while ago, so we're we're headed north here. Pretty large. Looks like hemicorallium. Also a white primnoid with lots of brittle stars on it. Some mushroom corals. Yeah, this bodes well for the rest of the dive. Yeah, great start, eh? Kid in a candy store here. I don't know which way to look first. Come up just a bit for us, Paul. Yep. We see this uh, null feature here. Decide the best way to go up. I'm seeing amazing colors here, like. That sponge was like, it's perfect glass sponge color. And I feel like we're getting a lot of reddish tinges compared to the last couple of dives. Like I remember, I'm just like reflecting on the fact that there was that really bright yellow color we had seen. And we hadn't seen that in the past couple of dives. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I wonder how. I think the deeper come up you go, you start to see less. So we're, we're a little bit deeper than some of the more colorful parts than yesterday. So you see a lot more reds and less of uh, bright yellows and things we were seeing yeah, I'm gonna take on it. the cliff faces yesterday. Mm -hmm. Can we get a zoom over here on one of these corals? Absolutely. Sort of fannier looking ones. You can push in a bit there if you want to. Sure, which one you were after? This there. one. Right. Thanks. Push it a bit more if you want. Some tissue loss, pretty evident there. Bridge, this is Nev. Interesting how those cars are half dead, uh, half alive. Please move the ship 20 meters at 045. You notice uh, George's reply there. But, uh, the nomenclature we usually use is 20 at what was the variant again? It's taller yeah, orange. So, uh, yeah, so they instead of saying here. 20, they say 20 at 045. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but that's. There's a request to see the um, high pack on the quad view. Where else for Jeff? Thank you. <laughs> By royal decree. <laughs> George allowed it, so it happened. Looks like some larger paragorges on this rock. Some associates. Quite a 
density of chrysogorchids as well. These sort of bottle brush here. Could you um, name some of these in their common names for us? Yeah, so these, they have these any. Uh, larger corals where you can see the sort of um, serpent stars wrapped around its branches. Those are our bubblegum corals. And then uh, sort of more delicate uh, looking corals are bottle brush, chrysogorgid corals. And then the sort of whip-like ones are bamboo corals. I think we're seeing a few different species of those right now, including some that are branched as well, like the sort of really tall one we passed just now. And then some mushroom corals as well. So really good diversity at the start here. Totally, and you can kind of see all the dead organisms that kind of just floated and drifted off to the bottom there. It's like a, looks like a lot of um, yeah, so sponge. That means that there's probably a lot of oh, stuff that, yeah. higher up that is definitely falling down. So mm. probably in for a lot of cool sites. Potential, potential. Seems okay. Could we take a zoom on this uh, white fan coral when you sort of get around it? Sure. We got room to swing around here. You can uh, push in a bit there, Jeff. So this looks like a pretty large primnoid here. Push in a bit more for us. Some of our viewers are having a hard time seeing channel two until they pull it to the quad view and they see it there. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. That is a nice shot. Can that's we come a in a little, uh, do full zoom, see if we can get a look at some of the polyps? Yeah, let me uh, come down and touch here if I can get a stable zoom. A great base there too. Okay, Jeff. Also, yeah, so we've been seeing a few of similar ones to this this expedition. Oh, we're thinking they're Paracolyptrophora, type of primnoid coral. You want the porch light on for? Yeah, maybe there's something there going on here. Rack back a little. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Nice. It's probably touching the camera there. Hard to focus on. <laughs> Speck on the lens. That's a great shot. Thank you. you happy with that? Yep. Looks good. Okay, Jeff. Well. Nice Argus shot, too. You want to bring your head to the left just a little? Yeah. USBL is acting up. Good, a, uh, you get an Argus grab? Screenshot back there, too? We got some fantastic ones from the last time. We uh, cut for the highlights. Right, we're seeing a branched bamboo coral there. Don't think we've seen a ton of those. This Are all your lights on, Paul? Mine? Yeah. Not all of them. Yeah, turn them all on. It kind of creates a little bit too much bottom light. If you, uh, tilt up just a little, maybe.
So um, is this seamount considered a gill? Yes, it's a gill. A flat top to seamount. Flat top seamount. And then that also, um, that leads us to believe it was, a, it broke the surface at some point, did it? Yes, there is some alternate theories that not all flat top geos had to have formed at the surface. Um, that there may be some processes that could explain their construction differently. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's one of the mysteries and maybe something that we can try to solve with some of our, you know, rock sampling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the the common commonly accepted theory is that um, geos spent quite a bit of their time above the surface of the water, and as they slowly sank below the surface due to the motion of the Pacific Plate, they um, their tops were eroded away. And as they continue to sink, coral reef ecosystems kind of uh, grew one on top of another and over millions of years kept growing until they couldn't grow anymore. And that helped define the Can we take a flat look at top. Yellow coral kind of like here. atolls are now mm. at, the, at the level of the surface. Mm -hmm. I'll push it there if you want. Yeah fringing reefs and small islets. Is that how the rocks become, uh, when you say altered, is from the surface erosion? Um, somewhat, but what you'll get is on the top of the geo is uh, a different rock type altogether. You'll get a sedimentary rock um, from being a coral, coral environment or a beach environment for many, many years. eroding the volcanic material and bedrock and, and creating sedimentary sediments and sedimentary rock. This looks like I can't the gorge it off the coral here. This yellow one. I think we're good on the zoom. Thank you. And, uh, what do you think about porch light here, Jeff? I'll try it. Slide up the underside of the rock here as we come around. Throughout the day, we'll be seeing a lot of our um, SCFs and fellow crew members tuning in with our students with live interactions. And um, I'm pretty sure they'll be pulling up our live feed to show them what to see. How deep is the top of this seamount? So the, the very top of this seamount is, I believe, 1,500 meters. And we started off at 2,130 meters. And we'll be slowly working our way up to the top. A lot of dead, sort of platey spots. Good for another twenty. Touch. Sir, another toasty bridge. Sir, enough. <laughs> Requesting a move of two zero meters at zero four five. Some awesome biodiversity here again. Those are mushroom corals. Those red ones. They are yes. Awesome. Quite a range of sizes on them here. So. Seeing hemicorallium and bubble gum corals as well. Which one's the hemicorallium and which one's the paragorgia? I think uh, the, one of each the right one's the paragorgia? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. 
could be corrected, but when their polyps are out, it makes it a little bit harder to tell, but the branches tend to move more in the current on Paragorgia. Lots of brittle stars on that one. Yeah. Hey Jeff, when you get a chance, can you put the DSC in one of the little quads? Yeah, up there a couple dead corals like we saw. Um, right, seeing some evidence of that same tissue yeah. loss. Didn't notice that as much on yesterday's dive on Solar Day, but the yeah. one on the, uh, I think it was unnamed East, had a lot of that. You guys don't have the DSC powered up, looks like. Well, it's powered up, but you don't have it, so doing that thing yet. Yeah, seeing some dead coral bases kind of scattered around here, too, and some yeah. old glass sponge, so community that's sort of always in flux, always growing. You want to power cycle it, Paul? You want to power cycle the DSC? I don't know if they've tried to adjust the DSC. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Try to keep a straight face. <laughs> Game face. <laughs> Game face. Making observations. Does anyone know the, um, the length and width of the top of the seamount? Oh boy, let me I look at the dive plan. try and measure. Pilots, what is our current intensity and direction also? If you can Sorry, say again? Uh, interested in the current intensity and direction. Uh, hard to say, I could do a bit of a drift test here. The top of the GEO is more than 10 miles long, probably wow. 12 or 13, and about six or seven, I'd estimate, miles wide, so quite large. All those contour lines, is Come that what they're bit, called? Just a bit, Paul, so we can uh, see the tether there, that's another telltale, what the Hercules tether Contour lines are the black lines on the, uh, mm. on feed, Stream three, or lower left quad. So you can see how steep the sides of the seamount is. Mm -hmm. When the contour lines bunch close together, it's indicative of a very nope. steep slope. Awesome. Another cool coral garden here. Yeah, a little bit, really yeah. Really dense. Uh, nice basket star. I think that's the first one we've seen today. Because these, um, the, we believe that this may have... Could we get a zoom on this branched guy over here? I think sure. that's a branched bamboo. Really interesting branching Sweet. pattern there. It's really it's not internal. a lot of uh, current seems to... Uh, I have to say, I would say uh, 140-ish, 140.1. For the next move? Uh, no, I was just doing a little drift test there for the current. Nope. Uh, we did uh, 140.1 knot. Yeah, so it was about You mean coming from 140 to us? Uh, no, current usually is uh, two winds from currents to like a river. See. Well, to the south. How about the strength Cur of the current? Come up a bit, Paul. Any? Uh, Hercules was drifting uh, point 0.1 knot there. Okay. Thanks for that. Okay, Jeff, you can push in a bit there. On the Yeah. 
through here. Polyps fully extended. Dwight, who's uh, who's in charge of uh, lighting up the digital stills camera? Yeah, Fiona's working it. Oh, yeah. um, it's it's not. Is, is uh, something not right with it? It hasn't been uh, started yet. Uh, hold on, let's check because I thought didn't um. Okay, See, Justin, fix it. Or, or did Leela show you how to do that? No, she didn't. So what are these captures being captured from? I'm not sure. I've been are, taking uh, pictures from here, and everything's been ah, fine. just from the video. Yeah, we're but getting yes. video stills, I guess. Dan, are you saying the still camera has not been turned on? That's correct. Yeah, that's okay. the image right there. So it, it can be set up to be um, take manual pictures, or it can be set uh, time lapse. Uh, yeah, I think usually Leela does that. Um, I'll call the data lab and see. Right. It. Yeah, if not, we can uh, we can set it up up here. Steve also knows how to set it up. Shutter bug that he is. Yeah, porch lights on. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Hey Steve. Raj. You want to? You want to? Uh, are you at a? Are you at a KVM? Uh, don't you have a KVM back there? Can you pull up the digital still camera and get it going? <laughs> While I think about what kind of uh, lines I'm gonna tell for your video camera. For another twenty, you can touch another two zero. Good for another two zero. Bridge, this is Nev. Yeah, let me move up quick. Uh, two zero meters at zero four five, please. Hey Dan, I'm gonna start just pointing at things, <laughs> just to. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Oh. Well, <laughs> at each other. Pointing at things, no, that's, that's <laughs> way, way too staged. I too will randomly point at things what about, too. What about doing this? No, no Dr. Ballard is a natural for for the camera. The camera. Yeah. Yeah. Part of that's just because of the water we're in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can take a little bit of that out, but yeah. Paul, um, I don't know if you know Mark Myers from oh, UCSD. Yeah, yeah. He's we could, my PI during undergrad. If we want to stop for a second, we can do another white balance really quick. But I'm not sure that's going to help anything. Looks all right to me. Uh, okay. Looking for a password, Steve? Oh, let's go. Admin. It's just my, uh, you know, when a PI never comes to the lab, but when someone important comes, they got the lab coat on and gloves and goggles oh, yeah. even. <laughs>
for everyone tuning in at home, we're just um, getting some technical things situated right now. Take another look at this really, really high animal blood. density, though. A ton of these whip like bamboo corals, bottle brush corals as well. Yeah, this ledge looks really covered. Bring our head to the right just a bit for me, Paul. Yeah. Very interesting crack in the okay. in the rock there. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at it. I don't have a. Can what? Oh, I don't think I even have the computer. I'm just viewing it. I don't have the mouse. Uh, maybe the data lab. What are you trying to do? Um, yeah, someone's someone's doing it. Steve's doing it. No, I Let's think Steve just asked me to release the computer. But oh, I yeah, someone else might be on it, Steve. It's probably I Justin. I have a hall of Therian up there. I know we're dealing with other things. But yeah, we, we could leave it alone. Justin's looking at it from the data lab, I think. Lots of hemichorallium on this ledge. Hemichorallium. Really Good for another two zero touch. Pretty large anemone there, center the screen. I'm going to bring that porch light on again, Jeff. I do that. Just a little quick review of some Hawaiian vocabulary, because we're seeing a lot of them here. So the general name for most of these organisms, so like the coral is a koa. Koa. Koa, yeah. And then the um, sea anemones are named okole. And um, the rocks that we're looking at are pohaku. And Got a primnoid making its way down. Beautiful yeah. transition from pole into deeper pole. Tragically close there. Current got me. <laughs> and our superhero Justin has arrived. Oh, hello. Got an interesting, really long bubblegum coral over here. I'm trying to see what's bubble going gum on there. Coral. We have a lot of vocabulary re ready for the um, for Hercules also. For Hercules also, like um. The, the slurp or suction sample object is called the hapana omo. For the push core and sediment core sample, it's called the hapana koana. For the um, for the grab sample claw, that's called a hapana lalau. And in general, the ship that we're on is named is called a moku. And the remotely operated vehicles are called Mokuluukia Awaya. And then when we when we name the ROV pilots, we just put the word pilot in the very Come beginning. Up a bit, Paul. Rush. Turn. Give me a yeah. view over above her there. Get and then we the have. Board. You would okay, then be named Pailaka Mokuluukia Awaya. Yeah. I just don't have any that's, light. That's good. can play around with them a bit. Too. That's better than whatever you did there. Yeah, this is... I 
to get too close and the brows start brushing them. Just a little, little greedy on the underhang there. <laughs> there is something on top of the this little ridge. Looks like quite a few dead glass sponges over here, formerly Walteria. Okay, port you like going back off. Bless you, in advance. Yeah, we'll go up and look at the top. I yeah, always, yeah. I always find the uh, overhangs extra cool. Yeah. But I think we're about to see a bunch of corals right on I'm top sorry. of the sludge. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the same rock here coming back to the south a little bit. Really sort of. I have. Four I've been testing corals. out Come back this to that one crack and, and then we'll pop yeah. up on top and have a look. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot up there. Yeah, I'm gonna just smile so here. that I look pleasant. You know, when there's a camera on us 24-7, I feel like it's more inviting to smile at certain things and point at comments like I'm engaged in everything. And there's another cool thing on my screen right here. And then what about that right there? Awesome. Just turn something off. Yeah, I turned the mid lights off. That glare was killing me. And he did the click on something because Steve's taking Dan, a video. Dan, did you happen to see the marine debris back there? I, the did. I didn't see it. I missed it. According to Beth, there was marine debris. Okay, That's okay. We come can around just and go note around. it, I think. And all right. North a bit here. Come up, yep. West Pole. So the <coughs> drop off to the right side there was uh, where we just looked underneath the rock. So I came back to the south and jumped up on top here. Really like a forest of bamboo up on this rock here. Lots of diversity we're seeing in the organisms here. Diversity and density, which is cool to see. Sure. Um, Can we do uh, one move um, to the north? In this area, we've mostly been just seeing coral for the most part. We haven't really been seeing any uh, large sea animals quite yet. I did see one of those uh, sea stars we've been frequently seeing on the bamboo corals earlier mm. in the dive. Besides that, yeah, you're right. Not a ton of mobile animals. Some brittle stars attached to corals, but... Could we get a close-up on some of this rock here? We think there might be barnacles on them. Sure. Loose rocks in the crack there too. If you're interested in a sample, maybe. Okay, Jeff, you can uh, push in there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep, we're looking at some barnacles here. 
the high density of them on this rock. I'm trying to bring you out to the these contour lines. Roger. Do we ever get scared of what we might see or come across? I don't think so. No, not typically. Yeah. What I are we looking at? That's a great look. Thanks. There? We want to stay right along yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Right along where? Right, kind of right along the top here. Like a little more to the north. But. Okay. Yeah, next these move will be north. Yeah, let's do the next move. All right. North. The rocks are really plastered in barnacles here. Interesting. Don't see that kind everywhere. Follow on this uh, feature here. Yeah. I can drop down a little though and see what uh, what else is in store. Brito stars. Yep, we're seeing quite a number of Brito stars down here also. He's actually right there. Mm, I take it back to Touchy, the 045 will. No, maybe a 045 is good? Uh, it's hard to say. There's lots of features here to follow, and they tend to be trending to the north a bit, at least for the moment. Well, we're about to finish the move. Um, I'll let you swim around and check yeah, out. Let's do 20 north. 20 north? Uh, yeah, right. Bring, uh, Bridge. Out, out a little closer. This is Nav. Uh, requesting ship move of 20 north. The scope of some of the geology we're seeing, the scale of it. And do a quick zoom there on the sand ripples, Jeff. sponge. Paul, what's the blurry spot in the bottom camera, bottom right camera? Um, that's like dripped salt. Okay, maybe zoom in now so you can see the ripples a little better. Yeah, so are those symmetrical or asymmetrical? Asymmetrical to me, like the current's flowing down the hill. Ryan, could you speak a little bit about, if you could, um, okay, about could at what out. point does a garden reef, reef of reef garden, become a coral reef? That was for you, Emil, if you're watching. So, uh, that's a good question. A reef um, is typically when um, the animals themselves become the substrate upon which they're building uh, or they're living. So. Um, you typically don't tend to see it with a lot of these um, soft corals we're looking at today, so they form gardens, but um, coral reefs are typically formed by stony corals, which build uh, hard skeletons made of calcium carbonate, and uh, over many, many generations that skeleton builds up, then they live on top of the skeleton, etc., and they sort of build their own uh, habitat. 
drop but down a little. But these coral gardens, like the one we're, we're looking at now, are really the, uh, important habitat in their own right. Um, mm -hmm. And as you can tell, a lot of uh, a lot of animals are associated with them, and they, they foster really high biodiversity. Yeah, and saying that, um, might you know um, about whether the barnacles that are found at this depth, the same species that are found underneath a boat or between fishes and that's a good question other zones within the ocean um, I don't know much about barnacles so I can't answer with any certainty I would imagine there's some sort of species turnover mm -hmm. um, from the shallow to the deep parts of the ocean but uh, not too sure There is a question about um, what are our favorite creatures in this in the sea. Anybody want to share what their favorite sea creatures are? Chonoclops, Kinovars. There's uh, flamboyant squidworms. It's a thing, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> squidworms. They're cool. That's so the first Bolasoma glass sponge we're seeing today on the right side of frame. Octopus. Octopus, Octopus are up yeah. there. Dungeonous crab, they taste good. Mm. <laughs> the lobster for Easter dinner was quite tasty as well. That was a winner. Lobster for Easter dinner. And a Easter sea star down there as well. Maybe we can take a, a zoom on it. Yeah, here, go ahead, Jeff. Push in there if you want. Looks like it's on a small coral down there, on a Chrysogorgid. I don't think we've seen that particular association too many times yet on this expedition. They usually seem to be on bamboo corals. We got to come down five or so, five or ten. Is that a tiny little sea anemone right down there, that red one, or is that a... Oh yeah, it looks like a, maybe an Anthemastus recruit. Right. And the Mastis recruit. Roger. You would think it's how yellow. big compared they look, how big compared they look to. Why am I stuttering? <laughs> 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 you would think that the sea star would kind of like be too heavy for the sea, the coral. It'd probably mm, like fall yeah. right off. Hey, you can see its, it's little not. hold fast cemented on there, so. Got a pretty good grip on the, the rock there. Um, so we're just thinking this sea star is a goniosterid, potentially. You can see some plating on its outer edge. Have you've, uh, characteristic of that group. Check your port cam, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thanks for the zoom. Oh my. Yellow coral there is uh, an acanthogorgid. Gorgeous. coral. we've been seeing quite a bit of this expedition. <laughs> Got some coral samples in the bottles. Hopefully not. They'll, uh, they flush out. Yeah, yeah, it's up on the bottom too. Yeah. Okay, you can come up a bit now. Watch. Still seeing some bamboo corals here, but they've sort of thinned out a bit in favor of these chrysogorgids. Do we... Um, Man, when it's raining, it's pouring. Do we find a lot of um, lanternfish? I don't feel like we've found any on these dives, but do correct me if we found any. No, I guess the, the closest thing would be that chonocops, which is a, an anglerfish mm -hmm. uh, with a sort of reduced lure, but uh, still an anglerfish. I don't think we can actually put a number on the amount of different creatures we've seen on this trip thus far. I feel like we've... Yeah. Uh, a lot. Yeah, we actually don't know because there are definitely some cryptic species as well, so that's why we're collecting some of these organisms, uh, going to take DNA samples and things like that to try and figure out... Mother um, moved in. 
little bit more about the biodiversity of this region. Uh, so we're still learning a lot. I'm really. Yeah, I need to come back around to the north. Bridge. This oh, is hold on. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I can touch it. I'm on my way out to the west there. Uh, my mistake. Hold position. Just eyeballing it. It looks like some of these bamboo coils can be well over a meter, maybe a meter and a half tall. Oh, we've got a really big glass sponge here. Do corals and sponges use the same methods? Can we take methods? a zoom on that glass sponge? Sure. Glass sponge. Thanks. Next to this large primnoid. Very interesting sponge here. Yeah, it looks uh, different than anything we've seen potentially. Um, uh, come so we've got Chris it's Kelly, so one, our lead scientist ashore, um, interested in out. a sample of this sponge. If we can do that. Yeah, we can. All right. Bend her off and her. Uh, yeah, Rich. Yeah. Can you go wide for a second, Jeff? That's wide. Is it? So yep. on, on this um, cruise, we've actually come across a couple of species already that we haven't been able to completely identify indefinitely. And um, we've been able to take a couple of samples of those. Hmm. And yeah, um, so definitely some new species to science will emerge from this, um, including potentially what we're looking at right now. So you're exploring the seafloor in real time with us, making discoveries in real time with us. Interesting kind of circular st structures in it. Yeah, it's really pretty. I liken them to like large pores. Yeah. Are we uh, and, uh, ready to sample? To uh, 10 meters, 315, Katachi. Yeah, we're, we're ready. So FYI, Which this, this is nice. will be pretty brittle when you collect it. Requesting a ship move of 10 meters at bearing 315. So, so we think this is going to be brittle? Yes. Hold on, Paul. Let me uh, back out a bit. I got a little too close here. So Chris Kelly, our lead scientist ashore, sponge biologist, um, is actually really excited about this specimen because it uh, looks like something he's never seen before and can't even place it in the family level. So uh, a really interesting specimen here. Wow. Happy to have the chance to collect some of it. And uh, is this going to be a snip and slurp or a, uh, a bio box sample? Or? Probably depends on how big of a chunk you can cleanly break off. Um, so let's yeah let's see what let's see how you do with the first try here, uh -huh. and we'll decide. <laughs> oh. oh no! Wow. I guess it is a little fragile. Okay, reach out, and grab a piece of it. Uh, what do we learn Trip from... Force three. Oh. I'm going to leave the air right now so that we can get a good focus on what we're doing. You got Grip Force 3, Paul? Yep. It is uh, 
actively falling apart. Oh. Yeah, you got a piece of it. There. We definitely want the, um, a white piece, not a dirty piece. But I think so that's that what broke good. off. It looked pretty white. Yeah. All right, all right. Come back down here. Oh. Bless you. Open your jaws and uh, get rid of the. Open it. Yep. Get rid of this one. Yep. Okay, reach out. Take a bite. Pleasant face. Just a bite. Uh, gently close and uh, rotate the jaws. Any case we can slurp this, Ryan? <coughs> oh, yeah, it might prove to be pretty hard to grab, so. If you rotate just a little, rotate. I'll leave that up to the pilot. There, grab that. Easy, easy. Not all the way close. Yeah, perfect. Nice. <laughs> they are a bit private. We have nice coral cutters, but not necessarily sponge cutters. Okay. So where are we going with this? Slurp? Or uh, I don't trust it necessarily to go around. Yeah, that. let's slurp it. Roger. Please. I don't necessarily want to do the whole spin. That's okay. Got the bucket? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Yeah, sorry, I went the wrong way there. You all right with seven? Uh, can we do one? Okay. Might take a while. Oh. Our jar. Right. Oh, it's going to behave. No. Nope. Oh, we can do seven. Oh, never mind. It's okay. We can go to one. I'm sorry. One <laughs> appeals to my sense of symmetry, but. Yeah. You read about Argus at all? Or Atlanta? No, oh, it's ground altitude. Oh, okay. I'm just seeing the picture. Are we uh, still trying to get to the right sample jar? Yeah, about to go. Okay, up. seven's okay then. If it's too, if it's taking too long. Doesn't matter. Steve, you want me video? video of me smashing the mouse on the console to <laughs> complete frustration. About five. Five works. <laughs> five is great, thank you. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Section coming on. Sorry guys, it's gonna no worries. have a mind of its own there. <laughs> We've given it lots okay. of love and still can't get there from here. It's like we got suction. Should be on. <laughs> Put it on the 
on mute when you do that. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first warning. Don't open, just put it up there and let it suck in. Yeah. Get some of the... Uh... Come on, suction. Which, uh, kind of at my, like, joint limit. Pitch down. Pitch, pitch. That one? Oh, pitch. That's oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And you're on the left. Five, yes. Is that you going in? Yep, you're going to kind of hold it, yep. smear it on there. Oh, there's a little piece of coral there, too? Yeah, looks like a bonus. Uh -huh. Yep, looks like it. You Come on. Grab the chunk again. You would think the way it is so brittle, it would just... Some little pieces are getting in there. Yeah. yeah. That's good on the uh, sample. If um, you turn off suction and we'll see what drops down to the bucket. Yeah, yeah. let me also it. ask. It's trying not just to, sure. Trying to be clever here. I was going to say, you're trying to steer into it, aren't you? Oh, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> now help it. Ah. Sorry, I just turned off suction. Let's see what was in Turn it back on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it keeps floating back up for you. Yeah. After all that, I had it right there. Oh, it's, it's coming it this way. Oh. It's gonna come back. Yeah, it's coming back. Oh. Pilot induced oscillations. <laughs> Wait for this it. This is the video game skill. Wait for <laughs> it. Oh, horrible. Uh. Horrible <laughs> fail. Okay. Alright, it's actually going on. Can we uh, grab a quick white balance before we jet off of here? Yeah, let's do that. Go ahead and set that back up. down. And Stick that arm out. Oh. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I was just trying to get that. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll deal with that. Uh, porch lights, lasers off. On it. You got it? I got it. Some background of the uh, epic sponge sample fail here. All right, uh, can I blind you for a second, Dan? Sure. I mean, if we think we need more of the, uh, it's still right. right there. Hey, Paul, can you? Or, yeah, either one of you. Are you still? Suctioning? No, no. Because I um, haven't really we're on, seen, seen we're on it. jar five right now. Bump left. I've seen. I, there was some. There was some small pieces. Okay. What's that, Jeff? I said, go ahead and try and get the all the tape in there. There you go. So there's the sample jar. Oh yeah. Okay. Is that enough to uh like ID or get DNA? Um. Stand by. Uh, we're at, yeah, we're stand chatting by. with Chris on shore. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Pull your arm under there. Stream three. It's on stream three. Grab another piece of that thing. Can be 
done. Yep. I feel like grab the. Yeah. Is that, that's the same sponge, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you. We'd like to try to put a flat piece in one of the bio boxes. Yeah, we can do that. You got this, so you want me to give it a go? Um, I think I can do it. I think you can do it too. Maybe just grip off like that right piece and then. Yeah. Oh. Boy, it's really brutal. Wow. Just the thrust from that. Pick up your arm just a little bit. Maybe that top section looks pretty clean. Yep, okay. Semi-stable for the <coughs> moment there. I wonder if they try to grab it closer to where the base was. Yeah, that, the if piece that that's sticking straight up, we think. Yeah. Yeah, that might, that might so be good. If you grab under there with your coral cutters like you were cutting a piece of coral. Yeah, I've just got to straighten up my joints. I'm like fully twisted here, I think. That's where it was attached, right? Yeah. All right. So it might be more rigid. Can we zoom in a little there? bit now? Turn your uh, jaws 180. Yeah. So the blades are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah got it. Can we zoom a little bit? Thanks. That's, yeah. And if we move up the piece right in front of us here. I think just I would, straight like this. I would grab right at the bottom. Like under the big lobe there. Right where it's starting to, yeah, a little lower. Yeah, if you open your jaws there, you'll get that whole piece. Uh, you are Grip Force 3, right? Yep. You can uh, pause and put the bubble camera on it too, that'll help. No, no, I just needed to open the jaws without uh, knocking the whole thing away. Yeah, and then don't uh, come down just a little lower. Yeah, now don't fully close, just easy, easy, like the tennis ball. Yep. And at some point it will break off, and that's... Yeah, now I'll try and hold there, and then do just a little twist. close. A little more close? Yeah. It's like the consistency of a snow cone that you're trying to Should be able to get it in the starboard box. Yeah, so. that's yeah, the sure. preference. All right. yeah, I don't think we can. I think that's for got it. Micro rocks. Yeah. We will see what happens as I spin around. Do you yeah. want to do this part, Dan? Or no. Nope. All right. Yeah. Get the camera set up. So slow. Yeah. Once you're set up with those rear cams, if you can crack it with bubble a little bit too. I'm gonna go real slow on this. I'm gonna get this thing to move. It's not. Oh, there it is. Once you come around, I'll just go. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do that now. Let's see what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I got no laterals on. Let me disable the starboard rear. to float. Yep. Zoom in there, Jeff. Zoom. Oh, we'll zoom on the massive oh, carnage. Oh, no. Look at Bubble. 
the top piece just broke off. Uh, wow, that's really fragile. Do you still have a chunk in your grip? Uh, I can come back to the left and find out. Go full way. Yep. <coughs> You can uh, check with bubble. Probably pick that piece up, but I'm not sure. If there's still a piece left in your jaw, that we could uh, just slurp it, slurp it back into the same bucket, maybe. Yeah, it's a small yeah. piece. You want me to uh, give it a go there? Yeah, sure. <laughs> or if we could drop that into a pile, either one. I mean, this is still a piece. still a sizable piece. Yeah. Um, Drop that in, and then you can pick up the other piece. All right. This little piece I actually have a good grip on. It's kind of cradled by the jaws. Yeah, extend a little more in the box. We're going to want to get that in one of the back little boxes. Yeah. If you can get it into one of the, into B, C, or D, I think that would be a preference. Yeah, I think B would be a low hanging fruit for you. That's really good. Can I try a piece? Yep. Since we're here and we <coughs> got a giant sample on the seabed. This One. counts as two samples, right? Yes. Okay. One thing to note here is the pretty amazing regenerative powers of sponges. So in many species you can knock a piece off and can form a new sponge. So will this just kind of reattach itself where it's at? I don't know if this if this type of sponge can do that necessarily, but um, I know many can. Chris Kelly's typing in the chat, so he might weigh in on that. <laughs> Maybe I'm off there. If you uh, put bubble up on the screen three, either way, a very valuable sample. I'm glad we could get some. Grab. Not the box yet. Yep. The big flake just falls off. Whatever's left in the current. Yep. Well, we're going to get a second handful. Potentially. Great. saying it will <coughs> survive most likely unless it falls down into a crack or something where it can't filter. Are you going for another piece, Dan? I think so, yeah. All right, you want me to reopen that? What's that? Got some help. Or... Just rotate for a second. Mm. That dirty stuff. Yeah. Okay, he wants the white stuff here. Yeah. For those of you just joining us, we are uh, collecting a sponge sample 
at the low end of the Mercury Seamount. They're starting at about 2,100 meters in depth. This is a projected 24-hour dive. We'll be working our way up a ridge on the, the Seamount. Water temperature is currently uh, below 2 degrees Celsius at the seafloor. We're about three hours into the dive so far, so we've got about 21 hours until we're back on deck. A nice chunk. Like you, also not in the box yet. <laughs> yeah. Zoom there, Jeff. Thank Sponges are generally considered to be the simplest animals. They are animals. They're organized at the cellular level. They have a few different kinds of cells. My favorite kind of cell in uh, a sponge is the amoebocyte cells, the ones that kind of move around in, in between the other cells. Coanocyte guy myself. Uh, yeah, <laughs> coanocytes. Coanocytes are little collar cells. They have little yeah, turtleneck on and a flagella that causes some water current. So uh, just as a note, we did get that third handful um, just now, which was a pretty decent sized flake of it. Uh, so that was three separate grabs that all ended up in BioBox B, Starboard BioBox B. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, no, we're not making your life easy over there. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, and it definitely, it's not super floaty, but if there's um, a lot of thrust, it could get uh, tossed around. So you might want to like make a note if they, for future samples, we've got floaty, fragile stuff in, <laughs> in that one. Okay, will do. Thanks. So before we go away, there's a fan we're also interested in over here. Sorry. To the uh, right or left? Uh, trying to figure that out. Sorry. I can go back and look at the carnage that we just left there. <laughs> Got some kudos coming in for Dan and Paul. With some tricky sampling. Yeah, good team effort. Trying to grab wet tissue paper. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad about their collateral damage there. Well, in the name of science. Let's check. So, I'm not necessarily seeing the fan, so I think we're okay to keep going. Maybe we'll see a, right. another one or whatever we were thinking of. Um, I can come back to that exact same view there. Yeah, 
embarrassing as left view. We have a viewer wondering what kind of education our crew has, well, particularly ones that are doing biology. Do you see it there, right? I'm not seeing any different fan. Maybe we could just take a look at this one. That's potentially it. That was the one I, uh, I believe we also touched him as well when we touched the sponge. Okay, Jeff, go the ahead. Sponge on that rock looks like something we sampled the other day. What was the question, Christopher? The question was, what education do we have? Oh. Like, for each and every one of us? I yeah. think that's good, thank you. Um, for me, I have, I'm currently working on my bachelor's in integrative biology. So, you know, for anyone out there who is currently working on theirs and is interested in this kind of yeah, thing, you know, I really recommend you guys here. try and apply and you hopefully, you know, you, you get it, you get in. It's definitely an experience to have. Ryan? Um, yeah, so, I mean, there are lots of different paths to being a biologist. Um, I, I did my undergrad in environmental science, actually, and didn't really know I was going to be a biologist oh, until basically the end. Like my undergraduate career, so I did a, a yeah. minor in biology. Just noticing there's a lot of glare off the top. Um, yeah. Then I did a master's in earth and ocean science. Uh, was also in a biology department, so I sort of went more into biology during my master's. Yeah, Pushing um, a bit there. I'm now working on a PhD in biology, but I really recommend uh, you know, if you're interested in biology, there are a lot of angles at which you can come at biology. It's a really, really broad field, so we need not only just classically trained biologists, but computer scientists, chemists. Um, there are really a ton of different ways you can come at biology and bring unique skill sets to the field. So there's lots of different paths. So. What do you study, Dwight? Yeah, I have a undergraduate degree in geology and a minor in mathematics Source uh, soap. and then I for worked for about five Birch years and went back to grad school and got a master's in geological oceanography and then stayed on for a PhD in geological oceanography. I have a bachelor's like a degree in marine and freshwater biology and I went to grad school for teaching. What were you interested in? The sea? Uh, yes, looking okay. at this cucumber here. Go ahead, Jeff. Push in there. Chris, do you still get involved with aquatic biology? I do when I can. Lakes uh, we, and rivers? We have yeah. a stream that runs through our campus, so I've been able to use that pretty effectively. Uh, nice. It's kind of hit or miss. There's a lot of poison ivy along the bank, and uh, yeah. it, sometimes it's yeah. raging and sometimes it's ankle deep, so yeah. you yeah. can't right. always. Uh, do what you need to do in it, but we raise brook trout in our classroom and release them. Yeah. Do some water sampling. And I take my students to the coast. We're about two hours from the coast where I am in New Hampshire. So we'll go usually in the spring on a field trip. Nice. That's it. You can see it's feeding appendages, I believe, uh, yeah. out there in the front. Along with some okay. tube feed out to the side. So these organisms make their way along typically soft sediment surfaces. Um, Got any more there? Pumping yeah. sediment through their digestive system, getting organic matter mm -hmm. from that. That's a great look, thanks. Okay. Do we have the ship moving? The ship is moving. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms, related to sea stars and urchins and brittle stars. With a characteristic tube foot. Okay, you can come up a bit now, Paul. 
Chase this up. Raj. Coming up the hill here. top of the ridge. <laughs> Keep coming up. Yeah. Anybody have a favorite thing we've seen so far this cruise? Oh, it's hard to say. I think some of those cliff faces yesterday that were completely covered with life were pretty spectacular. I think that's, that's probably my favorite thing. Although what we're seeing right now is yeah, kind of like pretty this. great. I was really impressed by those places where like there were so many bright colors. Yeah. So look to see later in this dive as we uh, ascend maybe to shallower depths, look for maybe the transition in color. You might expect to see a little bit uh, more yellows and things like that. There's a few more big fans off on the right. Looks All like right. the... Yeah. yeah, I see them, thanks. Chase them back to the right here. diversity of corals and sponges on this wall, along with really high densities. So we've seen a lot of white primnoid fans. Uh, the more pinkish coral is hemichorallium. Coral we've been seeing on most of our dives out here in the monument and just north of the monument. Bubblegum corals and mushroom corals. If you were wondering if there are any organisms in this environment that have a high metabolism and a short lifespan, mm. unlike most of these corals who are which are longer lived. Yeah. Should I turn off uh, craft power and turn back on the bender? Yes, please. Wait, uh, Is the current right to left here? Uh, I don't see too many floaty. Yeah. I see a few in bubble that. Touching that by way. the. Uh, touching by the tether, I would say. Wow, yes. there's a lot of coral there. Yeah, it's really dense. imagine with a density of corals as high, they're really processing a lot of organic matter that's coming through the water column, and in that way, really important for recycling the nutrients in the ocean's interior, um, along with fostering the high biodiversity that you see associated with them, all the things living in and around the corals. Porch light again, Jeff. Just drop down and have a peek on the ledge here. You want me to come down a little bit? 
but yeah. Wow. They do like the underhang. Yeah, a lot of them are oriented, so it looks like the current is predominantly yeah. right to left here. Yeah, they sort of cup their, their, they curve themselves around a little bit, like a catcher's mitt. These coral are also animals. They're a colonial organism. So if you look really close, you get to see the little polyps. It's a little body with a mouth and tentacles surrounding it. Same body plan as an anemone, basically. Even a few cup corals on the wall there. seen many of those yet today. Some of the last seamounts we were looking at had a lot of dead coral. Not seeing too much at all here. No, this is really vibrant, yeah. amazing density. Wow. Come up just a bit, Paul. It just yep. keeps going. Yeah, that's incredible. All of that Pink hemichorallium is really, really abundant here. You can see some of the bases, as bases of them going white, and that's sort of a telltale sign that they've been there a really long time. Some of these whip corals as well, bamboo corals. Is one of these guys, do you know? Those are the same as the ones around it, okay. just polyps up. Yep. retracted. Wow, getting yeah. bigger. It's really crazy. I love this area. Oh my gosh. Shoo. Dozens, hundreds of plant of uh, animals. They definitely like this rock, don't they? Come down just a couple meters for them, Paul. Some little white stylosterid corals as well. Glass sponges seem to like to be hanging out yeah, down that's here. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that's like zonation on this rock. I have a question about how the individual polyps get rid of their waste. If I'm not mistaken, they're just a kind of like a bag-shaped digestive system. Mm -hmm. So it comes in and out the same opening. Yeah, so they expel expel mucus with stuff in it that's called the ingesta. Oh, yeah. We're going to back off here and come down and have a look at the graveyard. And then we'll uh, come up and uh, we'll do an overview again. Are we able to get a little zoom in on this glass sponge sure. area under here? Go ahead, Jeff. This, this looks quite different to me. This yeah. Oh. I'm going to push in a bit more as I come down there. This 
squat lobster on there. It's surprising you don't see, we haven't seen many squat lobsters on that whole yeah. wall. Okay, I can push in some more if you want. Really interesting morphology on this sponge. Quite different looking. <laughs> so we cut this. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay, if you go wide, Jeff, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna come right in your so right at your pole, That so might be in the family Uri today, um, which we sort of tentatively placed that Chase me up glass here. sponge we sampled earlier in. So, still a family of sponges that we're learning a lot about, and we'll continue to learn with the dives in this region. Come up just a bit more and keep the light on her, and I'm going to come right at you. It's funny, the zonation, I mean, they, they're, they are all over this boulder, or this outcrop, and, and then not... Right, you turn the corner, yeah, and then totally different. Yeah. Okay, come back down just a little bit. Maybe look down a little bit now. We have a viewer wondering how much the coral and sponges uh, clean the, the water. Uh, a lot. Um, they Sponges especially are active filter feeders, so they're pumping water through their, yeah, we'll their body. And they are remarkably efficient um, at gathering nutrients out of the water column, and that allows them to reach some of the really large sizes we've been seeing. So they're, they, f they have a really important role in ocean eco ecosystems. Do we know if any of these corals uh, have stinging cells that would harm a human? I don't know if they would harm a human necessarily, uh, but all nidarians do have nematocysts, which are um, similar type of cells as in um, jellyfish, they're stinging cells. So um, they all have nematocysts in one form or another. Um, probably uh, not anything that would be harmful to touch. We've handled quite a few coral specimens that have come up on these various dives. Overhangs quite a bit there, so we'll come up the overhang there. I know there are some shallow, shallow water coral species that do. Yeah, certainly. Um, I think the defense mechanisms are a little less um, intense down here. Whereas in shallow water, you're really competing for space and uh, resources on a different level. question coming in about how we stay on track with our drive time and be where we need to be at the right time. Mm -hmm. Come back around just a bit. Huh? Yeah, we shoot to um, make good progress along each watch and try to get to the, uh, get to cover a couple of waypoints at least on each each watch cycle. Um, Obviously, when we're sampling something complicated like that sponge, it takes away from that. <clears throat> and we've made less progress on this dive than, I mean, on this watch than than planned. But um, the next watch could make up for it, and they'll get farther up the slope. And uh, we've been doing pretty well. We've been pretty much getting to our final waypoints each dive. And um, the last dive, if I remember correctly, we went about an another four hours after that. Yeah. I had a few of these anthemastid mushroom corals on the top of that rock on the left side yep. of the screen. 
we do like to stay on schedule, so even if we're short of a final waypoint, we may decide to recover anyway. Bridge this snap. Two zero meters at zero three zero, please. Are there waypoints on the high pack survey today? Yeah, they're just far. Um, I can zoom out to show you. Oh yeah, I'd be kind of curious. Did we um, did we take a fix of this feature? This kind of big round rock here. That yep, Fiona's snapping away. Yeah, but we have a uh, a survey. There right, you can see the oh, wow. second waypoint. Just climbing. Well, I don't think we're going to reach that waypoint on the shift. <laughs> no, they are. Yeah, the, the first one was really far for some reason. Yeah, cool. Come back towards you a bit here. Paul. Yeah, the distance between waypoint one and two is 1,300 meters. <laughs> We've barely made a dent. <laughs> We could have spent the entire shift on this wall. Yeah, see the whole thing. I'm surprised you haven't decided to stop yet, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so much to look at. That's really dense here, yeah. Just sort of the zoomed out view is so amazing. Come down a bit the there, scale Paul. Scale it is so, like this shot, crazy. You want me to come down too? Yeah, you can come down a few meters. Put the light on her clear. The rock they're growing on looks really different than what we were looking at yesterday on the solid AC mount. That's the ship's cool really hand handling well this dive so far too, which is good. Working along a cliff wall. Yeah, that's a nice shot that, of her. Yeah, Atlanta shot is beautiful. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, I'm coming up a bit now. Oh, this crest over. We've been over this before, but a little lower. I'll follow you up. Stocked glass sponges here. question about how we prepare and pack for being on a boat for weeks on end and how we combat boredom while we're on the ship. Uh -huh. There's always something to do. Yeah. That's Never boring on the ship. In between dives there's a lot of prep that goes on and processing of samples. Lots of books to read if you if you are bored. Cribbage. Crazy. A lot of cribbage lately. <laughs> there has been a cribbage tournament. Yeah. I saw Jess printing up a victim list. For <laughs> <laughs> She's really hard to beat. We do have laundry on the ship, so you don't have to pack for the whole, like a change of clothes for every day that we're here. I'm curious, down at the bottom there, is that sand or is that corals that have... Corals died? that have fallen off over yeah. the eons. We had a brief uh, shot at a graveyard down there. Yeah, this is one of the longer Nautilus legs that we usually go about three weeks. This one is almost four weeks, I think. And um, with a full you. ship, Good you start to run out of food and water. They can make water, so that's not often as much of a problem. Bridge, this is Nav. They'll definitely be restocking all of our supplies when we get back to port. Two zero meters at zero three zero, please. Our listed endurance is 40 days. 
Is it? Yeah. Come up a bit, Paul. I don't think I've ever seen us reach that limit. Yeah. 30 probably. A couple times. This one's projected for what, 23, 24 days? I uh, lost track. We left on the 6th. 6th, yeah. Or 7th. We'll so, 30th, 3 weeks would be to the 28th. We'll get in on the 1st, so yeah. Yeah, 12th. See a brittle yeah, star doing weeks. a high wire act over there. 21, yeah, 24 days. <laughs> 23, 24 days. Yeah, when we were operating up and down the coast of the U.S. West Coast, uh, California, Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, it's easier to get in and out of port. You could have shorter legs. Same with the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean. But out here in the middle of the Pacific, you really want to have these longer, longer legs whose transit distances are so far. Yeah, I was wondering that you mentioned the uh, Mid-Atlantic earlier, this watch, right? And yep. someone said it was, you know, a two-week cruise just to get there. Bring yeah. Head to the right a little bit for me. Yeah, I think um, this. the Okeanos legs are New uh, St. John's, Newfoundland to um, the Azores. I forget which port exactly, Madeira or something. Um, and yeah, I think it's a couple weeks just to just to get there. So, so are there ships with uh, much longer endurances that you know you can spend two weeks to get there and then another mm -hmm. you know yeah. while at the site? The drill ship Joydi's Resolution goes out for two months. Oh wow! Yeah, Hey guys, Justin here. Just gave Christopher a chance to get a lunch before our official shift. Oh, hey, cool. Justin. Yeah, this has um, been great having a, a lot of relief in the SCF seat. <laughs> a lot of school presentations this morning. Yeah, I saw the board. Thanks for joining us, Justin. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome to the 8 to 12. <laughs> yeah, Feels so like honored. I like our watch a lot, but it's also always fun when you get a visitor. Yeah. These are some amazing rock formations. Seems like nonstop amazing density. Yeah, really. But just the size of even some of the individual coral colonies are pretty remarkable. Like this top of screen, this hemichorallium is just enormous. Dan's got a, uh, Come down a bit, Paul. Yeah. Knack or luck of finding these cliff edges <laughs> <He does. laughs> that, are, that are heading in the same direction that we generally want to be moving anyways, so. That pays off, that's for sure. Yep, he does know. We'll say move the ship 20 degrees. He says, nope, 45. <laughs> and he's my right. Nose. <laughs> We have a, a class from California watching us, so shout out to them. I'm actually originally from Northern California myself, so nice to have some of my All right. home state watching. Where in uh, Northern California? Beautiful Sonoma County. Sonoma County. North of San Francisco, about an hour. Wine country. It, it definitely, <laughs> in, in my lifetime, it got a lot more wine country, too, I gotta say. Yeah. Used to have a lot of cool uh, apple orchards and walnut orchards and yep. ranches as well. We're good for another twenty. Bridge, this is Nev. Starting to make some progress up this cliff wall. Taking 
takes a long time to navigate around two zero these meters. Features. Are zero three zero, please. I don't mind taking in the view, although okay, you can come up not too bad. <coughs> yep. Some bamboo corals here with some interesting branching patterns. Well, I like that little corner. Yeah. Wow. This is, yeah, this is definitely the densest hemicorallium we've seen thus far, this expedition. Oh, look to the right. Yeah, yeah. farther That's to the right. Uh, wow. Are they all? No, there's some wow. others mixed in there, aren't yeah, there? Yeah. That's what's interesting, too. There's quite a bit of diversity as well. Yeah. There's primnoids and bubblegum corals and Lots of smaller things. There's almost the like com in competition in some areas. For oh yeah, I'm sure there. All right, Petaluma Historical Museum and Library is live streaming us. It looks like we got another Sonoma County uh, folks watching. Nice. Great Welcome. to have you. Come Did you have something to do with that? <laughs> Send an invitation. <laughs> no, I, I uh, I've been gone out of there for quite a while, but I'd love to see that they're here. Yeah, that's great. A couple of branches with that much tissue on it. Yeah. Does that little channel go all the way through? It looks very narrow. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of interesting. You see a couple of dead corals down at the bottom there, but you'd think you'd see more that would drop off this wall. I think at the depths we're at, um, I don't know a ton about the carbonate chemistry down here, okay, but they I might, think we're deep yeah. enough where they're dissolving pretty fast once they're dead. Sure. We are currently at 2,077 meters, according to Herc. Wow. Diving on Mercury Seamount. Located within Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument, up toward the northern part of the expanded boundary. Can we get a zoom in here? I think we have some. Yeah, a viewer was asking about guillots and the, the size of the flat top, and uh, we just guesstimated it was about 12 miles long by 7 miles wide. and. The, basically like the size of the San Francisco Peninsula. That's incredible. I didn't, so oh, wow. I didn't realize. You start thinking much. about the size of these areas we're exploring and their, their massive mountains underwater. Ma much bigger than in even individual mountains on land. Yeah, we have a hard time just monitoring the shallow coral reefs within the monument. And here we have the vast majority of the monument is this deep yeah. sea uh, fauna. Right. Yeah. And is it true no one's ever dove on the seamount before? I believe that is true, yeah. Yeah. At 20 meters. As far as we know, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Just mapped Bridge, this last is year in November, right? Yeah. So yeah, hadn't even been mapped before. Wow. In, in detail. Two yeah. zero meters at 315, please. See some nice base sponges there. Okay, oh, Jeff. Ryan, I don't know if you can answer this, but somebody's asking, how long would it take a hemicorallium to dissolve in this area, assuming maybe a foot-long segment? A people. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what the dissolution rate would be here. Um, we don't have a pH sensor on um, 
on the ROV, or and uh, so I'd have to have a better idea of the right the carbonate chemistry. But um, judging by the fact that we're not seeing any sort of skeletal debris at the bottom of this, um, you can assume that dissolution is probably happening relatively quick compared to the lifespan of these corals. Mm. Kind of. Another person is asking about the branching patterns of coral and uh, whether that helps us kind of distinguish unique species. Yeah, it certainly does. That's one of the uh, many characteristics. So there's the branching patterns, um, the polyp orientation. The there are um, in many of these soft corals there are hard skeletal elements, um, little pieces called sclerites within the tissue that also help. Um, and then DNA is another great tool we have to uh, help resolve some of the taxonomic differences between the species we're looking at. Amongst other things. Another interesting question for you. Um, a person was wondering if the corals and sponges, if there's a term for how they orient their bodies toward their uh, best feeding direction, just like there's the photoperiodism uh, uh, with I'd, plants. There probably is a term for that. Um, that's a great question. I'm not sure. Yeah. I usually just say concave into the current or something like that. Definitely looks that way, I would say. See a pretty long stocked sponge over to the right. Not as many um, ophoroids or, or brittle stars yeah, that's on, true. on the, these the, that are in the... I've noticed the number so, of associates yeah. is pretty low yeah. here. I wonder why. <laughs> 